Welcome to JHEP's lesson on transport of water from the root hair to the xylem. First of all, we're going to show you what the cross section of a root hair looks like and the basic journey in which the water has to move through to get to the xylem. So it looks like this. This is a cross section of a yong root. In your exam, you would need to write a yong root. Not an old root or an ancient root, but a yong root. And this is how it looks like. So we've got the epidermis which basically is a layer of cells in which um, which protects the underlying cells underneath it. The epidermis is usually on any other surface of organs or like for example our skin or something. And then, um, then we've got the cortex. Okay, we're moving in a um, downwards pattern, to, pattern towards the xylem. So the water would move this way. So it'll go through the epidermis, through the cortex, which is um, full of parenchyma cells. And parenchyma cells are just basically there to support the plants in structure wise, and usually when it's growing as well. Um, also, moving on, we go all the way down to the endodermis, which is basically a special sheet of cells which lets the water into the xylem through a specific pathway and we'll talk about pathways in a minute after we finish and after that um, we go through the pericycle and into the xylem over here okay moving on so the first thing the water needs to do is to get from the soil to the root hair cell. And for that to happen, um, the root hair cell needs to make contact with the soil. Now soil is made out of minerals and hummus. And usually when the soil is not dry it would usually have a layer of water around the soil particle so what happens is that the root hair cell the root hairs make contact with that soil and the water moves inside the cell through osmosis now inside the root hair cell there are a there are more there is more of a concentration of solutes so that means that there is a lower water potential inside the cell than it is outside the cell okay so this is outside the cell outside the root here and this is inside so let's say for example outside the um, the constant the concentration of the solutes is I'm just going to give it a random number uh, 35 and the concentration inside the cell, the root hair cell, is 70. And because there are more solutes inside that water, inside the cell, the water potential is lower. So let's say, for example, this is minus 75, okay, another random number. And um, the water potential outside the cell is mm, minus 20 okay water potential um, water usually moves down the water potential gradient therefore the water from a higher constant higher water potential to a lower water potential that is the direction in which water travels so water would go from the root hair from the soil to the root hair because of this water potential. The ions on the other hand, they are pumped into the root hair by active transport um, using the ATP which the mitochondria has produced and so on and so forth. As you should know ATP is just, um, it's just an instant release of chemical energy whenever it needs it, kind of like money. So if now we've gone through the root hair cell um, and through the epidermis, 
Now we've going to go through the cortex. So now we are over here. We're right here. Water needs to go through this cortex. And the cortex is full of cells. It looks like this. And there are three ways to, there are three ways in which the water can move for efficiency. Okay? Just imagine if you had a highway with one street. Wouldn't it be better if it had two streets or two roads? Okay, for efficiency. And the two ways are the apoplastic or apoplast pathway and the symplastic or symplast pathways, depends which, which one you'd like to say. And what happens is that the water in the apoplast pathway, the apoplast pathway, what happens is that the water transverses through the cell wall or along the cell wall. So that means transverses means I don't know if you haven't know, I don't know if you've done this before, but when you're transversing across the water um, in like an outdoor event, transverses across rocks, you're basically putting your whole body weight on it and moving across it. You're not going inside the rock. You're just going on the outside, you're moving on the outside of the rock. And this is basically what the water does. The water just transverses through or along the cell walls. Okay, so something like this, it will go all the way around the cell walls and it can move along each cell wall as well. So it, can, it doesn't always have to stick onto one particular cell wall, well it needs it needs to move on to other ones anyway. So it moves on to other cell walls. And it can go across intercellular spaces. Intercellular spaces just basically means the spaces inside like between the cells because some plant cells have spaces inside them. And the symplastic pathway, so um, upper plus pathway is transversing along transversing along along yep the cell wall and the symplast pathway which is the best one as you'd see in the common slide is um, basically the water enters the cytoplasm through the um, plasma membrane and it can also go through the tonoplast of the vacuole but that's more of a um, that's more of a vacuolar pathway but I'm going to merge these two together it can happen that can happen and the water can go through the plasma desmata um, the plasma desmata are basically spaces in between the two plant cells so if you have a look at this wonderful drawing I'm about to draw and then we've got another plant cell over here okay let's just say these spaces these spaces over here are plasmo desmata plasmo Desmata. Okay, plasma. You know, like the plasma. It's kind of connected. Okay, there are spaces in between the cell walls, and it can also, um, it can also move from cell to cell through the adjacent plasma membranes and the cell walls. So basically, it can move across these two cell walls as well through the plasma membrane so it could go in and out in and out in and out of the cells basically until it gets until it gets to the endodermis so right now we are over here right here on the endodermis and on the outside layer of the endodermis we've got something called the Casparian strip and that Casparian strip has um, the cells are covered with suburin, which is waxy and waterproof. And because they're waxy and waterproof, all the water from the upper plus, 
um, that went through the apoplastic pathway or the apoplast pathway now needs to be diverted. It stopped because the walls, the cell walls are now waterproof. So they can't go anywhere. So then they are trans, they are diverted to the simplast pathway because it can't pass through the apoplast pathway because that is waterproof, as I said. And the water from the simplast pathway stays how it is. That's why it's such a don because it can go straight through. So the advantage of this is that it allows the plant to control what ions pass through the xylem because remember these this water molecules might have ions dissolved inside it. So in order to in order for the plant to know and regulate what is um, coming in, it will go through the simplest pathway. It will go through the plasma membrane, and as you remember through module one, I think um, it would pass through the plasma membrane, which obviously has these channel proteins and these phospholipid bilayers and da 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 da, da. Um, and that's basically why they have this Casparian strip. And um, so to get through um, the, to get finally to the xylem, what happens is um, the water potential inside the xylem is higher, is lower, I mean, than the water potential outside the xylem in the pericycle at this current moment. So therefore, through the rules of osmosis, the water molecules will move from a region of um, higher water potential to lower water potential. So therefore, it will travel inside the xylem. Okay? And that is basically it. That is through osmosis as well, by the way. And that is basically it. That is that is our journey from the soil to the xylem.